Hello students, moving on to the next module on uh, comparative environmental law. I wish to discuss the laws relating to animal welfare. I believe all of you or maybe most of you and I don't know maybe none of you love animals but despite the fact whether we love them or not they are also part of the biosphere their existence no matter even if it's not a milching animal even if, if, if you're not a go rakshak but we still we do still care for animals right because uh, their coexistence is equally important and the laws relating to animal welfare when it comes to the laws well it's not that all the countries have kind of uniform approach with respect to that some countries are very progressive when it comes to animal welfare laws cruelty laws while some countries they are yet to formulate adopt and act progressive legislations with respect to animal welfare yes so the thing is that with respect to the legislative history of the animal welfare law in uh, united states um, you know the thing is that since we humans we emerged uh, so called pithic anthropus erectus uh, we were hunters gatherers uh, food gatherers we evolved uh, gradually right it took time for us to evolve into a member of so called agriculture based community or society however prior to that we were you know in this entire process of course uh, even prior to uh, this we were hunting animals but even in the process we started domesticating animals so there are several cultures uh, code of conduct laws regulations dealing with animals across the globe you know the thing is that long time back uh, in it comes to united states they there if you see their laws I and mean, their legislative history you will find a lot of those legislations are because of the contributions by animal activists um in fact you know uh, way back in 1986 when one of the scholars uh, clearly highlighted i remember that animals belonging to the temple church you know or even king they had an exalted status because they were regarded as inherently sacred and and it is very useful to know that these uh, so called the notion of the animal use laws which in fact is still there in our society is based is deeply rooted on how we have domesticated them how we have used them however it is also limited by several other notions Uh, because not all of these so called you know when it comes to documentation of the use of animals uh, be it for you know experimental subjects or so called for pursuit of knowledge especially in ancient times not all of them survived many of this information and knowledge uh, didn't survive there are several such documents way back during the time of aristotle from you know 384 bc when this particular famous greek philosopher and natural historian he wrote several books which contain the description of several varieties of animals which must have been written with the purposeful dissection of the species so this dissection was done at that point of time there was a physician named galen he in fact dissected animals which were like for example the apes the pigs to gain the knowledge of the functions of their kidneys of their you know entire spinal cord so eventually we learned and there are also certain documentations but the research with respect to use of the animals it also reached a new level in 1600 in europe because people started searching for greater knowledge and from 1600 to 1800 it continued and in 1800 many people in fact started exploring variety of medical related conditions also and you know louis pasteur right the one who is responsible for pasteurization louis pasteur in fact identified microbes which was responsible for several diseases like rabies anthrax 
So these are the scientific facts and some of the normal history which uh, you are also aware of, I believe. But what led United States to adopt this animal welfare legislation? The first country in the world was not United States though. In 1876, the first legislation on cruelty against animals was the Cruelty of Animals Act, which was enacted in Britain. It was the first animal, however, uh, first enactment, sorry. However, in United States, you know, from 1828 to 1898, several such uh, things developed because back then in United States, there were a number of such states, you know, uh, which kind of passed several anti-cruelty laws between this time period of 1828 to 1898. There was no federal law though. In fact, 14 states out of 50, they exempted animal experiments. There were only two times when animal cruelty laws were invoked in, on behalf of these lab animals, or so-called laboratory animals. And there were also certain bills, proposals, enactments in various places. But there was no federal legislation until 1966 when the United States adopted its first U.S. Animal Welfare Act. And in fact, the, with the inception of this 1966 legislation, a new shape be it political, social influence, which was responsible behind it, but a new shape was kind of drafted and articulated. And this particular welfare act became the first federal law protecting the welfare of the lab animals and brought the issue of also what we call the stolen pets into the forefront. However, this legislation was just the beginning. There were several subsequent amendments to this legislation starting from 1970, 70, then 76, then 85, then 1990, then 2007, which kind of with every amendments, they refined the standards of care and extended the coverage of animals from commercial, exhibition, teaching, testing, research, all these grounds. So each amendment were unique in nature with the changes and the events that inspired the passage of these changes. Now, when it comes to this 1966, early events were pretty much developed uh, with a very interesting and illustrative fact. Now, I'll tell you what. There was an article way back written by Coles Finisi from 1965. It was an issue of Sports Illustrated where a detailed story of Pepper, the Dalmatian, you know, Dalmatian, a breed of dog. In that you know, paper, briefly, Pepper disappeared from the yard of her home. The Dalmatian, it disappeared from the yard of her home. And shortly after the disappearance, the owner, while in hospital recovering from his heart attack, recognized that his missing dog has been kind of, it was, a picture and he recognized that his missing dog is in a picture which was taken by an animal dealer's overcrowded truck which was featured in a local newspaper now this owner's wife and child they tried to locate and retrieve the dog but was denied entrance to the dog farm so they approached the united the then united states representative joseph resnick so joseph resnick he was contacted and he was also kind of denied his entrance. The U.S. representative was denied entrance to a dog farm. Unfortunately, Pepper the Dalmatian had been euthanized in an experimental procedure at a New York hospital. And unfortunately, it never returned to her owner. But Representative Resnick, on July 9th of 1965, he introduced a bill which requires the dogs and the cat dwellers and the laboratories which purchases this animal to be licensed, to be inspected by the United States Drugs Authority. In fact, a hearing was also held in the same year, in the month of September, where a similar legislation was also sponsored in the Senate. Again, in 1966, the year when this Animal Cruelty Act came into existence, Life magazine also published an article which documented the housing condition of an animal dealer, uh, uh, sorry, housing condition of animals at an animal dealer facility. 
and the title of this particular article was very interesting concentration camps for dogs it featured the pictures of skeletal dogs described the neglectful conditions with the you know which was this uh, investigative journalist and maryland state police they found and this dog farm dog dealer farm from maryland was responsible for it and as a result of this particular article people at large they started lobbying in the congress to pass a federal law which would ensure that this animal housing should be regularized should be regulated sorry and proper care standards should be adopted so one article for condition of a dog dealing business stimulated this entire legislation congress was spurred into action in 1966 and president lyndon johnson back then he signed the bill into law and hence the 1966 animal welfare act first federal law of united states came into existence this particular act set minimum standards for handling sale transport of cats dogs non human primates hamsters guinea pigs rabbits even you know these are so called which are held by animal dealers or even for pre research laboratories in addition this particular legislation was in response to the tragedy of paper paper the dalmatian the 1966 legislation was primarily concerned with dogs and cats and it was quite restrictive with respect to coverage of several types of other animals so the dealers who were selling to this registered research facilities they had to be licensed now if the dogs and cats being purchased or sold by authorized dealers cross the state lines and once this research facility was registered the non human primates guinea pigs hamsters rabbits all these came under the jurisdiction of united states drug authority but this is a very progressive legislation that was first of its kind in the united states federal frame but there was also certain changes which was required over the period of time when they realized that it was also not up to the maximum uh, you know limit which it was uh, needed to attain so again in 1970 this amendment to this animal welfare act took place and there the although this you know the first mother legislation was an inval invaluable first step but it was not comprehensive enough and that is the reason why uh, you know with this amendment of 1970 the then president richard nixon in the month of december expanded the jurisdiction of usda by changing the definition of animal and scope of animal which was covered by the 1966 legislation so first the animal welfare act was expand, expanded to include all warm blooded laboratory animals removing the earlier narrow focus six species furthermore the coverage was no longer dependent on animals which was crossing state lines in fact interstate or in state transported animals also now fell under the usda's jurisdiction or oversight so this was a massive comprehensive amendment which was done in the year 1970 subsequently in 1976 similar to its previous uh, you know predecessors the 76 amendment also was a result of public concern over animals in fighting ventures in transportation of animals also back then in 1974 a congressman named thomas foley he held the hearing which shed light on the underground dog fighting business an underground film was also taken at one dog fighting event which revealed that there was extreme violence of these gambling and entertainment industry so despite this massive public demand from passage of the previous amendments it did not go through until it was again reintroduced in 1975 and finally in april 1976 the bill was signed by the then president gerald ford yes gerald ford now the thing is that 
no, no, not Harrison Ford, it's Gerald Ford. So in addition to this outlawing, uh, uh, you know, the interstate or uh, the forest transport of animals, which was used in fighting ventures, this bill also refined the standards for transporting the animals, especially by defining what is called a courier, not courier in the sense C-A-R-R-I-E-R, or carrier. Now the carrier now, which was meant as any enterprise, which is transporting regulated animals are and, and required this so-called transporters to be licensed. It had made this thing very clear. And this amendment of 1976, in fact, established the standard for shipping carriers, so-called shipping containers, feed, water, ventilation, temperature. You must have seen all those poultry farms going around the city of Guwahati or maybe from Guwahati to Shillong, just the way. Uh, you know, they are all kind of packed up. There's no space, one up the another. Well, even a pre pre Prevention Against Cruelty of Animal Act is against that. But who's noticing, right? Not Gerald Ford, for sure, from the heaven. Now, uh, another thing is that in the United States, the practices uh, which were prevalent at that point of time, it was addressed because of these kind of intervention. Which kind of furthered because the thing is that human consumption is a matter of great concern. The nature or uh, the pattern of our human consumption, the Chinese legislation, which in fact is responsible for, you know, what I meant or uh, when I'm saying Chinese legislation, I, I'm talking about the wildlife law. And if you see the standing committee report from this year, the first line that they have used is the changing to, in order to change the habit, the food habit of the people of China. The thing is that food is something which is very important, right? We all love meat, I guess, those who are not vegetarian or vegan. Uh, I'm not that fond of, but usually we all like. The thing is that when it comes to food, the United States also went ahead and looked into that avenue. The Food Security Act of 1985. Now, there was this legislation which was in place um, I mean, two legislations. One is this Laboratory Animals Act and Food Security Act. Now, by and large, in the early 1980s, the animal welfare right movement was gaining momentum in the United States. I don't know if you have heard about PETA, People for Ethical Treatment of Animals, right? You know, the founder, the co-founder, I would rather say, Alex Pachi Pachico. So Alex Pachico in 1981, who newly formed at that point of time, Peter, he volunteered in a research laboratory, which was the Institute of Biological Research in Silver Spring, Maryland. And it was a lab of some doctor, Edward Taub. He documented numerous violations of Animal Welfare Act back then, eventually prom prompting the, the Montgomery County Police to seize 17 monkeys from the lab. This particular incident is often referred to as Silver Spring Monkey Case. In fact, this led to several legal trials, which was also publicized at the later point of time nationwide. And congressional hearings were also conducted. There was a representative subcommittee on science and research and technology also, which kind of prompted in several uh, other future incidents because of uh, Bachiko's document. And between 1981 and 1984, several bills were introduced in the House of Senate, in the House and Senate, with respect to the care of animals in research laboratories. And eventually, Senator Robert Dole of Kansas, he included an amendment in the Food Security Act Farm Bill of 2000, sorry, of 1985, and he signed it into law. And it was that then President Ronald Reagan. Who signed the bill. So this was a new amendment which in fact provided a major change regarding the scope and the breadth of USDA's jurisdiction over animal welfare. So it was kind of the, of the jurisdiction was enhancing because this bill in fact mandated establishment of institutional animal care and use committees to oversee animal care and use at registered institutions. Again in 1990, once again, they came back to this Animal Welfare Act, which uh, kind of prompted, which was prompted by, uh, you know, uh, so-called several documents, once again, 
this was from 1976 to 86 there's 10 years it was kind of uh, there was a detailed uh, documentation of several such incidents where the pets were kind of collected through deception and theft in order to sell them in research facilities so as the concern kind of mounted it was in 1988 when a bill was introduced uh, the pet theft act despite this bill which didn't pass muster the pet theft act the hearing and the negotiations about the proposed bill was enough to include it as an amendment in this 1990 legislation the purpose of this requirement was basically twofold first and foremost it was there to allow the pet owners or so called prospective owners the chance to claim adopt an animal and the second thing was that to ensure that the proper documentation and record keeping is performed in order to verify that this animal was obtained purchased legally so this gave the owner of the animals claim over there in fact for the protection of the animals only because let's not get into that right bearing entity right because animals whether they have rights and if i am uh, having an animal i am the master and the animal is okay i'm the owner and the animal is my property it will get into two several different dimensions so let's get let's not get into that um, area as of now and then again in 2002 despite all these modifications you know the secretary of agriculture he administratively excluded rats mites birds from the definition of animals so usda was sued and in 2000 it agreed to amend the definition of the animals and now it covered the so called in addition to you know all these warm blooded animals they also started covering rats mice and birds and this was signed by president george w bush in 2002 which kind of redefined the term animal in the law to match the current definition of regulations and this change was made by uh, i mean this change means that the definition of animal in the this thing which was there uh, the definition of the animals it was kind of further modified and this was required at the same point of time the further amendment was 2007 the fifth amendment which is a very recent amendment and this was again once again during the regime of president george w bush uh, this was basically same you know on animals fighting prohibition so this bill in fact amends the animal welfare act to prohibit knowingly selling buying delivering transporting in interstate or foreign commerce a knife a gaffe or any other sharp instruments for attachment to the leg of a bird for use in animal fighting venture so this is how it is this is how progressive the legislations and the subsequent amendments so called subsequent amendment of animal welfare act of united states was so in the days lecture i'll just uh, wind up here in the next lecture i'll definitely turn up to other facets of animal welfare laws in united states and of course some other countries maybe including india thank you very much